Yeah. My name is Paul Wolford. Um, for the last almost 50 years, I've been a cookbook writer. I had a column in Food and Wine magazine, traveled all over the world to write about mostly Mediterranean diet. Um, I just, I'm a five time James Beard Award winner. I tell you all this because shockingly one day I'm being interviewed, this was about two or three years ago, I was being interviewed about my last book online, not online, on the phone, excuse me, um, on the phone, and the gentleman who was interviewing me um, had read the book and had prepared some brilliant, complex questions. And I couldn't answer them about my own book. I didn't understand what he was saying. It's like I didn't understand uh, two or three sentences joined together. Up until that time, I had noticed from time to time that I was sort of failing in memory here and there. But you know, I'm 75. Okay, I dye my hair. But I'm 75, and everybody says you have senior moments. So okay, you know, I would forget things. But this shocked me, because I had been used to and being interviewed, I've been on radio, television, and I got a little scared. And so I prepared myself for the, I, oh, I, this is what I did to save myself, because I am interested, I'm not stupid. I still wasn't stupid then. I said, that's a great question. Isn't that what you're supposed to say? I said, that's a great question, but we don't have that much time, so let me tell you what's most important for your readers, because this was for Fine Cooking magazine. Let me tell you about the magic of the tagine. Well, how is he supposed to say anything? But yes, yes, of course. And so then I gave one of my spiels that I give about the beauty. I write, this was a book about Moroccan cooking. I should have prefaced that. And which won the Beard Award, by the way. So, you know, it, it's a serious, it was a serious book. And um, I went on, and from then on, whenever I was interviewed, I said, I want my questions in advance. Um, I just want to really prepare myself. So people started giving me the questions then, and everything went smoothly. But I started to notice there were other things. Forgetfulness, um, time ratios, all kinds of things started happening, not right away, but enough that I knew there was something wrong. Still, a year went by before I finally went to a doctor and said, you know, I think I should be tested. I'm just, there's something wrong. At first he would, he poo-pooed it because he says, oh, you know, that's what everybody says. And it's really horrible that no one will ever believe you um, because everybody says your age, that's what it's supposed to be. You know, you can forget things. But this was a little bit more than that. I started not being able to do arithmetic. All of a sudden, I couldn't, I couldn't do numbers backwards or forwards, and then my eyesight, it wasn't all at once now, mind you, this was over a period of time. When I would type, my typing, I couldn't see the letters because sometimes the letters moved. When the um, um, MRI was taken, it was confirmed, and then I started um, with a neurologist in San Francisco, who, we, who absolutely referred to it as MCI, Mild Cognizant Impairment. And the research man at UCSF, University of California, San Francisco, California, San Francisco, referred to it as Alzheimer's. You decide which it is. I don't know. I have um, been told there is no cure. Okay, I didn't cry. I didn't even really get upset because I am the kind of person, I guess because my husband left me in Morocco 40 years before with two children, I'm the kind of person who immediately regroups and said, okay, I gotta figure out what to do. I did research, I started on all these different foods, whether it was coconut oil or the vitamin uh, supplements, I did everything. 
I, I joined yoga classes. I started running again on my treadmill. Um, now I've just started Ki, ki Zhang. I can't pronounce it right. And I keep going. Now it's over. It's almost a year. And I just came back three days ago from my um, uh, doctor in San Francisco, and she said to me, "You're holding steady." So I don't know. I'm. I'm supposed to be part of a trial very soon, but right now I'm not going downhill. There's no way you get back up, but I'm steady.